jujitsu. Some people love it, and some people, well, um, they might feel differently about it. I don't know. In an older video, we looked at the narrative that jujitsu is ineffective in MMA today, and we completely debunked it. We basically made it a 100% fact that if you believe that opinion, you are not fit to procreate. But today, we will be switching gears. I don't want to look at its strengths. I want to look at its weaknesses. I want to analyze the issues with this martial art, try and come up with some sort of a synopsis to find out why there aren't as many UFC champions with a jiu-jitsu base, why they struggle against wrestlers, and hopefully at some point find a way to call all of you idiots. Alright, let's get started. Well, let me paint a picture for you. You're watching a UFC fight. Two guys come out. John Anik proudly displays that one of these guys is a black belt in jiu-jitsu. You think, oh, okay, that's interesting. All right, let's see, let's see what happens. That guy gets taken down. He grabs full guard. And then he just lays there and takes a pounding for four and a half minutes. And you're just sitting there like, what? Dude, give your black belt back. What are you doing? What is that thing even for? Well, this brings me to my first point. Full guard, outdated, it's old school, get rid of it. And here's why you get rid of it. In completely 100% sport jujitsu, there's pretty much three submissions you could realistically get from full guard. Triangle, armbar, omoplata. I mean, yeah, maybe you could go-go plata, that's rare, very hard to pull off, but, you know, there, there's three. In MMA, it's really just the triangle. If you can lock up a triangle, the guy's pretty much done. Armbar is going to be really hard to get from guard. Who's going for an Oma Plata in MMA? I mean, Nick Diaz go-go plotted someone. That's the only time I could ever think of that happening. That's not, that's not going to happen very often. As far as sweeps go, it's very tough because the person on top has a very good base. It's tough to off-balance them. And by locking full guard, you're essentially pinning yourself to the ground. So if you can't get any offense going, you're stuck there. And like I said, your offense is basically one submission if it's MMA. And this brings me to the second issue and further exemplifies why it is so hard to pull off this one submission that you can possibly do from full guard. And that is the wrestler that is on top of you also knows jujitsu. And he's looking out for those arm bars and those triangles. He's ready for them, so good luck pulling that off. The only people you're going to see really threatened from their back in full guard are guys at the highest level. Charles Oliveira against Islam, definitely threatened with a triangle. Brian Ortega against Volk, he had that triangle locked up. But these guys are the best of the best at this. Most people with a black belt in MMA are not even close to that level. Most people miss it because it happened so fast, but Gilbert Burns actually almost armbarred Humzat, and he did not like it, and he did not take Gilbert to the ground again after that. His words, not mine. And, but when I took him down, he tried to, like, took armbar something, and I was like, yeah, no, I don't like that shit. I'm going to go up and knock him out, you know. Like. <laughs> but Gilbert... Obviously, four-time IBJJF Nogi world champion, so that makes sense. How do we fix this issue, though, for the average black belt in the UFC? Well, here's what I'll tell them. Forget full guard. You're doing half guard. Specifically, Z guard. Craig Jones style. When you're in bottom half guard and you put that knee shield in, it is perfect for mitigating damage. We saw this again with Gilbert Burns versus Humzat. Gilbert would put that knee shield in, Hamzat could not punch him with that distance, and Gilbert was throwing off his back, and he was landing. The key is the knee shield. If you're flat on your back without that knee shield in, you're pinned to the ground. But if you're on your side, knee shield in, you're framing, you have space to move. You can transition to a lot of different places from there. You can grab an underhook, come to your knees, look to wrestle him down. You can dive under to the leg and transition to a leg entanglement and go for a whole lot of different submissions from there. You can grab, I don't know, a choy bar. That may be a little optimistic, but I would love to see that happen. When Charles Oliveira fought Islam Makachev, Charles did have some success with full guard. 
he is one of the best guys in MMA at that. He threatened with a triangle. Islam, you know, knowing that was probably one of the few things he could do, was ready for it. When he had Charles pushed up against the fence in full guard, Charles couldn't do as much because his hips were controlled. But when he was in half guard with that knee shield, he actually transitioned into deep half, which you could do a whole other set of things from there. But Charles tried transitioning to a leg lock, and Islam literally stood up and he got out of there. He bailed. He did not want to deal with that. But look, I don't blame him for that. I mean, once he realized how much better of a striker he was than Charles, I mean, I wouldn't play legs with him either. I would just try to stand up. Let's move on to reason number two. The style of your jujitsu matters a lot if you're going to transition to MMA. Let's take Andre Galval, for example. Next to Gordon Ryan, probably the most accomplished submission grappler of all time. He went to MMA. He even fought Tyron Woodley back in Strike Force. He had some success. He also had some failures, and he gave up on his MMA career very fast and went back to jiu-jitsu. But why? Well, you see, a lot of jiu-jitsu guys are very good at winning matches by points. And I mean very good at it. Like, they will be world champions, and they won this match because, you know, they got a sweep, they got an advantage, and they sat on those points, and they won the match. This is a fine strategy for winning jiu-jitsu matches, but you go into MMA and you realize, okay, all right, I'm fighting against a Division I All-American wrestler. I'm having trouble getting it to the ground, and when I do get to the ground, my submissions are not that high level because I win by points, so I can't actually finish the match. He's scrambling up. He's a better striker than me. It is not going well for me. I'm, I'm, I just pooped myself. Yeah, you get the point. The reason Ryan Hall was so deadly in the UFC was one minute he's on the outside, he's throwing some kicks, next minute, boom, your ACL just exploded. Of course, it's very important if you're a jiu-jitsu guy to be good at control, be good positionally, but you gotta understand, odds are you're not gonna be as good at that as a world-class wrestler. So what do you need? You need your submissions to be deadly. Like the great John Danaher said, the thing about an amazing striker is they always got that one punch that can connect at any time. Well, if you got a world-class BJJ player, they've always got that one submission. They can always just lock it up if you make a little mistake. I.e. Valentina Shevchenko's last fight. Reason number three. There is a slight difference when you lock a submission up in the UFC versus at your local tournament that you pay $80 to do. See, at your local tournament, those guys are going to die before they tap. Just kidding. No, they'll pretty much tap if you hurt them at all because, you know, it's a local tournament and like guys usually have to work the next day. Like I'm I'm not I'm not going to risk hurting my ankle and having to walk with a limp tomorrow at work. The UFC on the other hand, Half of their money is gone if they tap. You know how many times you see in the UFC guys grab arm bars and they're like, I will let this break. Like, I am already a dead man walking. I don't care. Tony Ferguson Oliveira. That time T- Sanhagen was in that armbar triangle. Uh, Kevin Lee against Oliveira and Tony Ferguson with the arm bars. Just to name a few. Point is, your submissions may be good. But you need to get those submissions in a way where that person knows there's no chance I'm getting out. Like, I'm done. Because if not, they're not going to tap. If your triangle is in, but it's not sunk all the way right on the blood, you know, like Volk versus Ortega, he's not tapping. I'm not going to tap. My championship belt is on the line. I'm not tapping unless I am going to sleep. And there's a huge difference between that and what you see in the UFC now. Just to preface, when you've got guys who compete at ADCC, those guys aren't going to tap either. I mean, this is ADCC, you know what I mean? The Olympics of grappling. Those guys aren't tapping either. The issue is, how many of those guys doing ADCC are doing MMA? Not a lot. They don't really need to anymore. Most of the high-level jiu-jitsu guys that you see in the UFC... They don't have that kind of accolade. They're more used to those local tournament settings. Or maybe they used to compete at a very high level. They have it in a very long time. They're getting ready to do MMA. They're just training jujitsu in the practice room. And in the practice room, you get me in a submission, I'm tapping. 
right? A little, a little neck crank I'm tapping, but you get into the UFC. You grab these same submissions that you practice every day, but all of a sudden these guys aren't tapping. They are not tapping. They're just sitting there gritting their teeth, just repeating their mantra in their head, if I die, I die. That is why it is pivotal to make sure your technique is flawless. You need to really focus on those submission mechanics. You need to understand in and out when something is going to break when you do it and when it's just going to hurt. Because if it's just going to hurt, the guys you're practicing with are going to tap all day, but when you're in the cage, they're not tapping. That's what they need to do to fix that issue. So in conclusion, if you're a jiu-jitsu guy, you want to do MMA, make sure when you get a hold of a limb, you're taking it home with you. Make sure you got those mechanics down. Make sure you ain't winning matches by points. And last but not least, make sure. Absolutely make it certain. Make sure you aren't an idiot.